Greetings, this is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSND. This video will describe the upgrade slash migration process to ADS 2.0. You shall see the upgrade performed and specific options that will allow the server to be upgraded. The backup and restore command for a migration will also be shown. This video will describe what has to be evaluated prior to an upgrade slash migration to ADS 2.0. The unattended mode is anticipated to be a very common approach to performing the upgrade. The very first and most important step is to positively know the server environment you'll be trying to upgrade. That is the memory provisioned, number of processor cores allocated, and the hard disk space allocated and defined by partition. What are the components being upgraded by which version? SAL 1.x has to be upgraded to a minimum of 2.2 before the ADS 2.0 can occur. How might this become an upgrade slash migration? The answer to that question is based upon accurate hardware information gathered in the first step. An example, ADS 2.0 with both SAL and SLA MON to be installed, it is strongly recommended to have four processor cores, eight gig of memory, and 220 gig of free hard drive space. The 220 gig of free hard drive space has further requirements where the slash op directory and or a separately mounted slash var partition has a total of 220 gig of minimum free hard drive space. If the above noted recommendations cannot be met on the current server, you are forced into an upgrade slash migration or possibly creating a second server to run either one of the individual components on. The three properties file sections to note are fresh installation of an individual component, properties are for upgrade scenarios, and the section minimum hardware checks fail. The section abbreviated here as a fresh installation of an individual component is used to add a second ADS 2.0 component if its partner already exists. The section of the file abbreviated here as properties for upgrade scenarios and minimum hardware checks fail are used to address what pieces are to be installed slash upgrade and the various conditions where the server hardware does not meet recommended values respectively. Setting the values in the minimum hardware checks fail section will allow the upgrade to happen but only with the intention of performing a backup of the current system once it's upgraded to be restored to a system meeting the minimum configuration requirements. The mandatory SAL files have to be addressed and each application specific section should be reviewed for completeness. Finally, it should be noted that the file values will not override preset values in the components being upgraded. Let's look at the ADS response.properties file now. I have opened the ADS response.properties file using the VI editor on this Linux system. There's another video that explains the ADS underscore response dot properties file on Avaya Mentor. In this video today, I will only be speaking to the options that apply to the SAL upgrade and the new install of SLA Monitor 2.3. The first section of this file has a header following properties for upgrade scenarios. In my inspection of the system, it was determined that the SAL gateway release was 2.2, so the top option applied. My choices on this option are to upgrade SAL or to upgrade SAL and to install SLA MON. I have changed the default value to a 2 to upgrade to SAL 2.3 and to freshly install SLA MON 2.3. The next part of the file we'll look at will be to allow the system upgrade to happen as when I did the evaluation of the hardware there was enough processor cores and memory. However, the hard disk space is about 27 gigs short of the recommended amount of free disk space. This next section of the file is available to overcome this issue.
It is worth noting that this shortage would not prevent efficient use of SLAMON. The number of days of storage may be impacted if a high number of subnets are being monitored though. Going through the file in this section with the header of the following properties for proceeding with upgrades even if the minimum hardware checks fail, we will find a number of options. Some are similar, so careful examination may be needed due to the similarities. The upper portion has the option highlighted that might seem to apply here, but the server configuration is very adequate to support cell, so this option does not need to be touched. Going down the file to the lower section, it has a subheader of the following six values will allow the application to be installed if the RAM or hard disk recommended requirements are not met. This is where the second option has to be addressed. The second to the last option addresses the hard disk storage. I have changed that value to a Y to allow the installation to proceed. I have pre-edited the file for the mandatory entries that must be addressed. I have highlighted them now. Those entries address the automatic software update feature and the requirement of a provisioned SMTP server, SMTP server port, and an email address for the administrator. While we are looking at this portion of the file, I have highlighted the SEID and the product ID. Since this is a working system with a working SEID, the installer will ignore what is entered here and keep the working one in place. I have closed the file and will start the unattended upgrade shortly. Now we will take a quick look at the cell gateway and after a successful login, you can see it is version 2.2. There are two provisioned CM managed elements plus the gateway itself. I have gone back to the CLI again. I previously changed the version of Java to 1.7 and verified that with the command of Java minus version and the output returned JRE 1.7 version 45. Entering the command dot slash install dot sh minus unattended will start the upgrade process. I am using fast motion video here so the whole upgrade process can be reviewed. The actual upgrade time should take approximately 15 to 20 minutes for this configuration. I will return when the upgrade completes. The upgrade is completing and I have highlighted the starting SLAMON service message with the install successful message also shown. There is a similar message about the SAL gateway UI starting. When the command prompt is returned, the installation has completed successfully. Logging into the cell gateway again, we now see that the gateway version is now 2.3 and the managed elements look exactly like what we saw earlier. Looking at the new installation of SLAMON, you can see that it is up and you can start other provisioning work that is required with that application. Changing our focus slightly, what if this turned into the case where you had to upgrade to be able to migrate the data to a new server? The steps we have just performed would be duplicated with a follow-on step 
to create an ADS 2.0 backup to export it to be restored into the new system. The command called backup underscore restore dot sh located in the slash opt slash avaya slash ads slash backup restore directory followed by the command line option of backup and a place to store that backup in example slash temp will create a tar file of the sal and sla mon 2.3 data. Running this command, you can see that a number of files are stored in the backup. The backup file here, shown in red, would be transferred to the new system, and using the same command to create the backup, except with the restore option, will complete the migration of the data into that new server. In conclusion, you have seen the SAL Gateway upgraded, SLAMON installed to have a complete ADS 2.0 system. Lastly, you briefly saw how the data backup would be created to provide a migration data set to be restored on the new server. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.